In this first demo, I'm going to show you how to develop, deploy, and scale a simple RESTful microservice using Wildfly Swarm and Minishift. The first step is to start Minishift. You can start Minishift by running the Minishift start command. This will start a small virtual machine that just runs Docker. A single node OpenShift cluster is then launched inside this VM and it runs as a container. Once the cluster has started up, we can use the OpenShift client called OC to log in to the OpenShift cluster to create projects and application. In the case of Minishift, the OC client is installed under the .minishift folder under your home directory. Let's go ahead and log into the OpenShift cluster using the OC login command and we will log in as the developer user. You can also log in to the OpenShift web console using the same credentials. To open the OpenShift web console, run the Minishift console command. A default project called My Project is already created for you. For the purposes of this demonstration, let's go ahead and create a new project called Demo1. You can create new projects using the web console by clicking on the New Project button, as well as running the OC New Project command from the command line. For this demonstration, let's use the command line. Let's create a project called Demo1. Once the project has been created, we can create applications inside it. You can use the OC new app command to create applications on OpenShift. Before we do that, let's explore the source code of a simple microservice. Let's clone the HelloSwarm application from GitHub. Let's briefly go through the source code of this application. We have a simple JAX-RS based POJO class with two GET methods. The hello method simply returns the host name on which this service runs and the health method just returns the status of OK just to make sure that the service is deployed and running correctly. Recall that the Wildfly Swarm applications when packaged creates fat jars which are runnable directly from the command line. These fat jars embed an application server runtime inside the application itself. The main class is the main entry point for the application. It just instantiates a new container and then creates a package combining all the classes in this project and a few XML deployment descriptors. Now that we've explored the implementation of our simple microservice, we can go ahead and build and deploy this application to OpenShift. There are multiple ways in which an application can be deployed on OpenShift. The simplest and most common method is called source to image or S2I. You can simply provide the git URL of your application to the OC new app command and it can automatically detect the language runtime that the application is using, compile, compile the code and create a Docker container of the application. This container can then be finally deployed to OpenShift in one go. Another approach is to do a binary build where the source code is built locally on a developer machine and OpenShift uses the binary to deploy the application on the, on the cluster. The developer also needs to provide a Docker file in this scenario to describe how to create a container for the application. We'll be using the binary build approach for this demonstration since an S2I build will take a long time to fetch all the Maven artifacts and build the application. Let's first create a new build using the OC new build command. This will create a new image stream and a build config. We can go ahead and now build the fat jar locally for the microservice using the standard maven clean package command.
Once the fat jar has been built successfully, we can start building the image for the microservice using the OC start build command and provide the location of the Docker file. Let's briefly review the Docker file that we've created for this microservice. It just uses a base JDK image and then injects the compiled fat jar into the image and we expose it on port 8080. We also pass uh, a JVM options as an environment variable. That's all there is to the Docker file. Let's go ahead and build the image. You can follow the Docker image build process on the command line or use the OpenShift web console to do the same. Once the image is built and pushed to the OpenShift internal registry, we can now run the OC new app command to actually deploy the microservice on OpenShift. Let's look at the OpenShift web console to see if our microservice has been deployed on OpenShift cluster. You can see that OpenShift has deployed the application and there is a single pod for our microservice. The application is now accessible to other services within this OpenShift cluster. To actually invoke the microservice from outside the cluster, you need to expose the microservice via what is called an OpenShift route, which provides a unique, fully qualified DNS name and a HTTP URL for our service. Run the OCGET service command to list the services in our project and expose the route using the OC expose command. You can run the OC get route command to actually see the auto generated HTTP URL that OpenShift has created for us. Observe that it's a combination of the application name and the project name. The microservice is now ready to be invoked from clients. Let's use the curl command to call our microservice. So we have a status of OK. This is returned by the health method in our microservice. And then we also have a hello method that returns the host name. In, the, in our case, the pod name on our OpenShift cluster. So now that you've deployed and tested your application, how do you scale it? Simple, you let OpenShift do it for you automatically. All you have to do is just press scale up and OpenShift will automatically spin up another pod for you. Let's verify by running OC get pods. Lo and behold, we have two pods. Let's invoke the hello method again. Observe that the requests are automatically round robin load balanced between the two ports. Now that you've developed, deployed, and scaled the microservice on OpenShift, 
Let's go ahead and make some source code changes and redeploy the microservice on the OpenShift cluster. Let's edit the hello resource class and change the health method to return a different string. Let's recompile and rebuild our fat jar. and rebuild the docker image by running oc start build a new container is built containing our new source code changes and pushed to the OpenShift internal registry. Observe that OpenShift scales down the previous deployment and scales up two new pods containing our source code changes. Boom, it's done. Let's go back and verify using the curl commands if our changes are reflected. Load balancing still works and let's check our health method and sure enough the changes we made have been redeployed and OpenShift has scaled the microservice to two parts just like we had requested. This concludes the first demonstration.